Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Thursday, October 25th, 2018. Uh, this is my third and hopefully final video of the day. The first two were for uh, subscribers of Right Side of the Chart. I covered some level, highlighted some levels to watch out for this morning, things to look for. And I'll do a quick summary here and maybe touch on a few things I haven't recently. Uh, so let's just start with this chart. This is just truly a textbook example of technical analysis and you know I had this trend line colored yellow and that's uh we'll call it the golden trend line uh it is just done an amazing job and uh you know sooner or later it's going to break it will break every trend line uh well or I should say or we'll have a good rejection where we walk away from that trend line then we go back out to the daily charts but uh We'll see what happens. You know, right now I'm looking. The futures have sold off a little after the market closed, uh, but here it is. This is this is today's action. Just another perfect tag, and I have not even modified this trend line in days. So here's here's there's yesterday's meltdown. Uh, there's this dotted line as a close. So this is the big gain we had, and you can see again without any modifications, kissed it to the button. And one of the biggest moves in years, you know, in, in intraday gains. Uh, kissed it to the button again, kissed it to the button again, and then reversed off there, and we're moving down after hours. Now, keep in mind, as I'm doing this, <clears throat> you know, we still have all the big three companies to report tonight. The big three I'm watching, Amazon, uh, Alphabet, and Intel. And this could pop. You know, the, you know, the more trend line is tested, sooner or later it's usually going to give way. And so a scenario I laid out before, uh, regardless of what happens, uh, if they pop it, we still have a lot of overhead resistance. And, and the scenario I laid out earlier today in the trading room, if they do pop it, maybe run up to 174, come back in, back test it, or fail. One of the two. And, you know, they don't have to pop it. Tonight can go either way. I've been saying that it is a crapshoot with the three big earnings reports out tonight. And even as I'm doing this video, if they start to report, I'm watching the futures on one monitor, which are down a little. Even if they tank or rip, I pay no attention to that. The initial reaction to earnings reports are the knee-jerk reaction. After that, you have the conference call. Uh, and they can give positive or negative guidance. Then it takes a day or so for the market to digest everything, all the numbers, crunch through the numbers, forecast. And then finally, and most importantly, it doesn't matter what they report. It's what the market's reaction is. So we won't know until tomorrow. And tomorrow, and I'm going to go over some levels. We have some very key levels. Uh, today's rally was, once again, impressive. Uh, nobody can say that it wasn't, but it's the same old same old for the last few days like the analogy i've been using is this is just like watching a big heavyweight fight with between two sluggers uh that you know and they're just exchanging blows and you know yesterday the you know the day before the bulls won then yesterday the bears run won today the bulls won i mean it's you know wash rinse repeat kind of stuff and you know as big as today's gain was particularly in the queues not so much in the spy it was just more of the same that's what you have when you have elevated volatility now all right. With that being said, uh, there were some significant levels uh, taken out today. I'm going to go over those in a second, but let's look at the other chart. Again, this is a golden trend line. Let's just color it that way um, because it's not by coincidence. Uh, you know, I like to watch, even though I prefer to trade QQQ, I'll always keep one eye on SPY. And you can see, again, a trend line that I have not modified. Uh, and this is not random coincidence. There's a high today of 280, right on the trend line. You can see it. We zoom right in. Look at that candlestick, the highest candlestick of the day. Kiss that trend line to the penny. Uh, so there it is. You know, if you're, you know, uh, long, did I think we'd rally this much today? No, I, you know, I'd look for potential short entries here, 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 but it was certainly not ruled out. And, um, and the most important thing is, it's simply an objective level to short. We're still in a downtrend, uh, so we'll see what happens. But as I've been saying, you know, when you sh anything you sh take home today, you have to deal with the earnings tonight, uh, and then tomorrow again, whatever happens. So, uh, like I said, it's up to you. You know, swing positions, or shorts still look good for now, despite today. There was a little, uh, little chipping away at the bearish case. I'll get to those charts. Let's just roll into those right now. Uh, let's look what happened on the daily chart. All right, so here's a daily chart of SPY. Forget about everything else you see, but let's focus on this. This is what I talked about this morning, 268.33. 
uh, we closed right back above that level. Now, with all the volatility back and forth, just like we closed below it yesterday, I don't put too much of a weighting because this, these extreme price swings, you're seeing uh, sport and resistance levels being sliced through, what I call momentum-fueled overshoots. Yesterday, the momentum was clearly to the downside heading into the close. Today, it was clearly to the upside. And so, therefore, for all intents and purposes, let's just say we closed on that level. Uh, I did make the bullish case yesterday, a potential bullish case. So here's some, some bull food for you. Uh, this may play out, these 60-minute divergences on the SPY. All the major indices, I pointed them out the other day, but uh, yesterday or today we had finalized the 30-minute uh, or I'm sorry, 60-minute bullish divergences on QQQ and the NQ e-mini futures as well. Doesn't mean they have to play out. I already told you my opinion. I'm leaning towards that not playing out. This has always been my, you know, during the bull market, look for these 60-minute divergent lows, especially at support, go long, but too much technical damage on the long-term charts right now. So wanted to point that out. And so that was SPY. And <clears throat> while we're on SPY, let's just continue on there on the weekly chart. This trend line goes all the way back to March 2006, uh, 2009, I'm sorry, the beginning of the bull market. Uh, very well defined. Talked about it many times. This was an alternative trend line, back tested. So let's just look where the SPY closed. This is a weekly chart. All that matters is tomorrow. SPY is still very much below both its bull market uptrend line and its 40-week moving average. It would have to really, and it is possible to get up there and close back. Yeah, it's certainly within a day's rally, you know, from, from where we closed today to get back on that 40-week moving average on or above it. And, and even quite possible to get back. It's only a little less than 3% to get back on the trend line. But again, from my experience, when you get this far below it, such an impulsive candle intra-week, especially heading with one day left, you usually don't do it. So uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. If they do pop the market and pop that 15-minute trend line, uh, you can look for a back test here. This trend line might provide an objective short entry if you're of the mindset that I am that any rally will be fleeting at this point. Um, but again, we'll, we'll, let's look at some other developments here on QQQ. QQQ is a little closer. Now, this is the index that everybody's watching and trading because there's a lot more juice. It's all mostly tech stocks. And the, the and it's chock full of the market beloved FANG stocks, FAAMG, Alpha, Alphabet, uh, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, and Facebook. <clears throat> Facebook's not doing so hot lately, but uh, either way you have, <clears throat> excuse me there, uh, you have uh, QQQ right now at that 40-week, really close to the 40-week moving average as we close today, just a hair below it. So without a doubt, uh, these these trend lines, the the the, the uh, 2015 trend line that comes off the mid 2015 lows, and that 40 week are still uh, we still have the possibility of a stick save. But as I said, we've had some impulsive action. These divergences, everything I see, uh, say that we probably won't get it. We'll probably have that one more thrust down. But again, maybe proven wrong tomorrow. Let's see how the week closes. Uh, I'll leave it up to you to decide whether you, if you are short, whether you want to stay short, whether you want to add shorts. And just to jump over to the daily chart, uh, I have a lot of levels, but this one I'm watching and have been watching intently recently, 169.60, give or take. Uh, I talked about it in this morning's video, but I believe that was only for members. Yeah, that video was for members. Uh, so a very key level. There's gaps, a lot of reactions. You can see it was a very solid resistance here. We bounced on it for weeks, finally made a breakout right here, rallied up, came and back tested it. So that gives this trend line validity and as does the fact that we recently tested it twice. And more importantly, it speaks to what I said about when you have this excessive volatility and price swings, it's more than common to overshoot support levels and resistance levels intraday as you did here as evidenced by that candlestick uh, tail there, the shadow, uh, and we close right back on that trend line and then bounce. So that validated that. Again, another reaction, a close, daily close on it. And once again, the other day, uh, earlier this week, Tuesday, it looks like we sliced through it again and closed back above it. And then finally, yesterday when we broke it, we didn't just limp down. Once it gave way, it was an impulsive sell-off from there, and that helps to validate it. However, boom, right back up. So that's that whole heavyweight fight thing, bulls and bears, exchange and blows, one wins one day, the other wins the next. And uh, although they did park it above it, 
you can see we're just below that 200 day moving average on QQQ. I showed it to you again on the weekly chart. It's the same as a 40 week moving average. So uh, one way to look at this, and if you're a purist, uh, this is a back test, broken support, the 200 day, and you can short the back test just like you would short a trend line or a bounce back to resistance. Uh, so uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow, but uh, I still maintain, um, you know, as of now, the bearish case is still intact and I'm still looking for another thrust down. Uh, again, if it changes uh, tomorrow in the next few days, tomorrow has a potential to really, you know, like I said, change the charts a little bit, maybe quite a bit, and then how we follow through on Monday. But uh, as of now, my swing shorts are still, you know, I'm riding out today's pain and just, you know, actively trading around the intraday stuff, all the intraday charts that I post in the trading room. All right. Uh, I think we'll keep this one short since, again, I, I, I highlighted the most salient points, the trend lines. And remember, there's still plenty of overhead resistance level on QQQ and SPY um, and uh, Amazon, who reports tonight, uh, closed pretty much right back on my first target. That was support right there. Uh, about 1766 we broke it went down below it we chopped through it remember earnings will often you know have the ability earnings if nothing else has a potential to override technicals although I've, i often say that if a chart is clearly bullish or bearish heading into earnings clearly bullish or bearish that's the direction it goes um however we already had a correction you know this is a correction i looked for on amazon we had the divergent high the breakdown back test um the million dollar question, is it over? And you can see there's that beautiful 200 day exponential moving average I love so much with a lot of tech stocks and even now Amazon throw it in that tech category, even though it's technically not a tech, well, it's tech, they got a lot of Amazon web services, all that other stuff. Uh, but boom, look at that kiss of the 200 day. How beautiful is that? And then that's where we bounce. So what I'm getting at here, you have the other moving averages, the 20 and 50, you probably can't see them on here. They just made a bearish cross recently, a death cross right about here. Uh, and then, so we're pinched now between some moving averages. This is a more important longer term trend one. So all, the takeaway from this is a week, two, three weeks from now, if we're solidly below that trend line on Amazon as well as QQQ and everything else, it's not good. Um, but if we can get back, so far Amazon held that on a weekly closing basis and QQQ, as I just showed you, is pretty much testing. And so we'll, we'll see tomorrow. Like I said, I can sit here and talk about this stuff all day long. Things will probably change tomorrow after all these earnings reports have sort of been digested in the market, really by the close tomorrow, uh, not so much tomorrow morning. Let's see how we close the day. But uh, as of now, there hasn't been enough despite today's rally. And uh, don't forget that today's rally, as impressive as it was, uh, did not uh, take away, did not wipe out uh, yesterday's drop. This was yesterday's drop from, let's show you right here, uh, down to here, well, wrong tool. Uh, but I think you can see it. And there it is from yesterday down to the lows. And today we went up to, did I do that right? No, no, I didn't. Here we go. Um, back over here, 4 p.m. When, yeah, this was a start here. So from highs to lows yesterday, that's it right there. That was yesterday's drop. Boy, I'll tell you, these, these drawing tools don't work so well. All right, there it is. There's the drop in today's bounce. So we, we didn't take back yesterday's drop yet. And again, I showed you the bigger picture. So we'll watch those trend lines. I was putting up some fibs to see how much we might retrace. I was expect, expecting a sell-off into the close today and uh, looking for a break under 174. We did broke uh, 171.44. And this is just a one-minute chart. Broke back, tested it, closed there. Since then, the queues have dropped off quite a bit in after hours. And then SPY, I, I mentioned in the trading room before, you know, when we were up here flirting with the highs, hit that trend line earlier I just showed you. I said, you know, look for a potential, you know, a, a fade of this rally. Anything at the end of the day, anything from one third to one half of today's gains would be pretty bearish. It would show you the institutions are selling into that strength. And uh, there's today's route. This is today's move. The lows right here. That was yesterday's close to the highs. That's the 38.2% uh, Fibonacci retracement. So you can see we've reversed just shy of that, which gives us a you know one third fade of today's rally we've faded about you know 33 percent 35 percent or so um all right let's wrap it up here let's see what these stocks do after the bell um after they report and after the conference calls and really until tomorrow i wouldn't i wouldn't lose sleep over what happens tonight uh, unless it's really huge um, but uh, tomorrow should be interesting and how we close the week tomorrow can tell us a lot and uh, like i said uh, yesterday uh if i'm right 
in this market's about to take another leg if it doesn't like what it hears from all three of these big companies collectively uh, and again because maybe one blows it out and rallies and two go down or two go up one goes down so but collectively if the market doesn't like what it hears and we start heading down lower again I think it'll be quick I think probably by you know sometime next week we'll hit my downside targets and I'll be looking to get long and if uh, if things go the other way and uh, these 60 minute divergences play out um, we pop we pop my trend lines I expect like I said I'm, I don't mind a little pop over those trend lines there's still a lot of work to be done here uh, 275 on spy 279.50 QQQ a lot of overhead resistance level like I said 178 is where I really start to be concerned if we go much above that um, and there may be a long trading op too even if we're just going to run up there and rally but again we'll have, I'll just have to see how the charts look tomorrow uh, and I'll, I'll start out with a video in the morning and uh, we'll go from there all right guys uh, best of luck on your trades this has been Randy Finney with right side of the chart hope you enjoyed it